Everything I'm going to talk about today is everything that I've learned from our speakers and exhibitors and scientists and researchers, and I am none of those things. I am just someone with a very keen mind for figuring out how to be as healthy as possible and as young as possible while aging gracefully. So hopefully this is a snapshot from pretty much everything everyone else is going to be talking about, but distilled into key takeaways that you can use in your life. Now, who here follows me on Instagram? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> that's a pretty good, that's not bad. All right, I thought there's going to be about three or four hands um, and some new followers. So um, yeah, this is my journey, and I'll be as quick as I can, and um, we've got a few questions at the end, and the best two questions, either wins, some kombucha from Annie Biome, stuff's awesome, and DNA company testing kit. Now, who's done a DNA test here? That's about 25% of us, awesome. So this is really, really awesome to unravel any health issues that you've had going on through your life. It tells you almost the blueprint for what's going on and what's going wrong, so amazing. So, I'll crack on. This is me at 31 years old, and uh, I didn't know that I was sick, actually. Um, I was eating shit. I was just doing anything. I was really unhealthy. I was bloating, and um, I went traveling. And on the way back of the plane, I wasn't feeling too good. And then the next day, I was stuck in hospital with kidney stones stuck in my ureter, which was horrendous. And I was in for three days because it was a bank holiday weekend. Nightmare. Anyway, that was the beginning of me as a biohacker without even realizing it. Then, fast forward eight years. Look at the state of that. It's ridiculous. So I thought I knew everything because I'd been doing so much biohacking for so many years. I'd biohacked just about everything I could, from my bloating to my energy to my mental clarity, all of these things. And I started looking younger, I'm not going to deny it, but look at my body, it was so skinny. I was scared of eating because I was told fasting was the best thing. Now, if you put on weight very easily, fasting is amazing. But if you're an ectomorph and you don't put on weight very easy, i.e. it's hard to gain weight, and this is me eating 3,000 calories a day, fasting is not a great idea. I thought I knew everything, and unfortunately, the internet is full of people that think they know everything. And when you question them on things, they fight for their opinion, thinking that they're right, because it might have worked for them. It wasn't working for me. Thanks to a few friends along the way, including Dr. Dom, wherever he is, Dr. Dom Nitschwitz. If you follow me on Instagram, you know this dude, because we're tagging each other everywhere all the time. And then this is me pretty much a year later. I was eating properly. I was timing it well. I was eating the right levels of the right foods. And my health took off. And I'm really, like, very different, in my mind especially. Um, great diet, lifestyle, low inflammation. I don't sunburn anymore. Obviously, if you know that you follow me, you see me in the sun grounding just about everywhere. I don't burn. I can be in the sun all day, every day, whereas I'd burn in 20 minutes beforehand. So my point is, is I am continuously learning, and I am learning from the best in the world. And the best in the world are in this building right now. Learn from them. Do the best you can. So, you probably know some of this stuff already, but I want to talk about what biohacking and health optimization isn't, because I think it's very important to define it by saying what it isn't. The media does what they can to make you think that it's crazy, that it's about chip implants or editing your cat's genes so it glows in the dark, and all these things which it definitely is not. It is a sexy name for health optimization, biohacking. Even though I'm a biohacker. And as Dave Asprey, the father of biohacking, says, it's optimizing the environment inside and outside of you to take control of your biology. More importantly, it is figuring out why something is going wrong and not just taking a headache tablet because you get a headache every day. It's preventing things from going wrong. 
And like my friend Martin Tobias, I'm not sure if he's in the audience right now, but taught me once, he, he went to the doctors and said, dude, I want to be better. And he said, what's wrong with you? He said, nothing. I just want to be better. He said, can't find anything wrong, sorry. That sums it up. Now you look at him and he's had a similar journey to me. So it's preventing health issues. Also, it's about targeting and quantifying these things, which is why most biohackers wear an aura ring or circular ring downstairs, which is a new one out. For the ladies, you can put new colors on it and things like that. It's really quite a cool ring. And tracking things. And as Tony said, I track 35 markers a day. I used to. I let go of it because it was driving me bonkers. Tracking too many things means you hold on to things and you start having issues because you're always worried about like every little detail. Sometimes you need to learn to let go. But the point is, if you don't track it, you can't see how you progress. It's why the car that you drive has a speedometer. It tells you how fast you're going so that you don't have to guess. But eventually you learn how fast 30 mile an hour is without looking at the speedometer. And our, it's the same with our health, with blood tests, with aging tests, with sleep scores, with all of these things. So even if you quantify and track it for a few weeks, you will learn so much about yourself. If you write down what you eat every day by using something like MyFitnessPal and look at your calories or macros or when you feel ill, check back to see what you ate the few days before, you'll learn so much stuff. It just comes to light. You're like, how did I miss this? For me, I was getting headaches for like two years and I couldn't figure it out until I started tracking my food. Thanks, Dom. And it was avocado. Because of the histamine, I was getting a headache 48 hours later and I was in bed for pretty much 12 hours. But I couldn't figure it out without tracking it, just by seeing the patterns. So, why do I call it health optimization? And what is this all about? I once said to my mum, I've got a little meetup in London with like a few hundred followers in there for biohacking. She said, Tim, what's a biohacker? I went, um, someone that optimizes their health using supplements, technology, and nature. She went, why don't you call it something else? I was like, hmm, fair point. Now we have, well, actually my mum and stepdad in the audience, which is awesome. And at a level where everyone can understand it. And if you want to speak to some super brains, then you can dig into the detail. But without understanding what biohacking is, truly is health optimization, so many people can't be helped by it. And in fact, I once stood on Oxford Street and surveyed people and said, do you want to biohack yourself? The looks I got were ridiculous, and less than a tenth of a percent of people said yes. In fact, people just didn't know what it was. But when you say, do you want to optimize your health? Like 94% of people said yes. 5% of people said a loved one, and 1% were busy London asses in a rush in their lunch break. So it brings in all of these things, and it's much more accessible, which is why we fill a hall with 2,000 people with tickets which I understand cost a lot of money, but it's a lot of money to put this event on, to be fair. But we fill a hall, whereas there's other events going on in health that aren't filling up. And I think it's the understanding of what we're all trying to achieve and bringing in the best of nutrition, longevity, ancestral wisdom, nature, fitness, and preventative medicine, and creating a safe space or safe place for us all to be able to discuss this. Such as Dr. Asim Mahotra, who is here. I'm not sure if he's in the audience right now. He's not. But he's a leading cardiologist in the UK. And he is speaking at a biohacking event. And Thor, the red light beds, who only go to medical conferences, are here at a biohacking event. It's bringing everyone together in synergy. So, to move it on. These are all really fun, including this blue tongue. It's amazing, right? I love them. I love my hyperbaric chamber. I, I love my chili pad, my red light therapy, all my supplements, doing IV at home, my Carol bike, PEMF devices, the lot. I love it, okay? But they're not fundamental. But we can do things for fun. If you think about mm, sex for a second, okay, don't think about it, but let's bear that in mind for a second. We do it to reproduce, but we also do it for fun. And that is the same with biohacking in my mind. 
We want optimal health, and we want to enjoy the ride. So that's really what I bring together. And it's about your mind, your body, and your environment. Your mind, things like meditation, flow states, brain training, nootropics, spirituality, psychedelics, being mindful. Psychedelics are quite fun in the right country when it's legal. The body, obviously sleep is number one for me. Supplementation, oral and dental health, thank you, Dom. Um, nutrition, diet, sexual health, fertility, detoxification, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go death by PowerPoint. And environment is everything around us that affects how we operate. To put it to the extreme example, imagine being swimming in a pool of acid. You wouldn't last long. Living in a city without clean air, you will last okay, but you deteriorate faster. Everything around us causes our genes to act differently. Air quality, which actually there's um, Altos downstairs, favorite brand of mine, I carry around an air measuring device everywhere. Like for instance, when I'm flying, you can check the air quality and how low the oxygen is, which is why you get jet lag. EMFs, obviously a big one, as I don't need to go on about. And there's a few things, I'll cover that in a minute. Light exposure, blue blocking glasses, grounding. Who here grounds, by the way? That's not bad. So, I'm going to get into my favorite hacks for each of the most important ones of what you should do in what order to get you 80% of the way, in my opinion, to being as healthy as you possibly can. I am not a doctor, I am not a specialist, I am just a curator of information that I learn, as I say, and I look for patterns. So, I'll run through a couple of these, but I think you should take pictures if you want to implement these. For instance, the number one biohack, if I wasn't on a desert island, if I was to have to drop every single biohack today, the one that I wouldn't drop is blue blocking glasses. There's a big claim. But if you don't sleep properly, you know the next day you're going to feel horrendous, right? With the odd exception of nootropics and stimulants and things like today. If you don't sleep enough, your body's not going to reverse the damage that you have done during the day to it. It's not going to use the energy that you have consumed, whether that's from the light, sunlight, or from your food, to reverse that damage. So by making sure that you optimize your sleep, you are optimizing so many other areas of your health. It is the number one thing that filters down to many other things. Blue blocking glasses blocks out the blue light, which stops you from secreting your melatonin, your sleep hormone, which means you don't sleep properly and you don't repair properly. Melatonin is also an antioxidant, helps with detoxification and multiple other things. You can pick up blue blockers on Amazon for 30 quid. There's no excuse. Using efflux on your laptop might work fine, using candlelight at home, but there's multiple things for blue light around the house. I've lumbered on that point because it really is the most important thing of all. And if you consider yourself to be optimizing your health or you have bad sleep and you don't wear blue blockers after sunset, you're wasting your time. You should be, all right? Turning off Wi-Fi. Before I got ill, I used to have really bad sleep problems and I couldn't figure it out. Every night I'd feel semi-awake. You know that state where you think like, what's going on, I'm, I'm, I should be asleep right now and my brain's just really active. And I had this for like eight or nine months. And then we had the decorator in and he moved my Wi-Fi router to the other side of the lounge and my bedroom at the time backed onto the lounge and the Wi-Fi router was literally less than a foot from the head of my bed. That night was the first night I slept in that place properly. And I was just like, can't be a coincidence. And this was before I cared about my health, honestly. So, at night, I have a remote control for my house that turns off all of the plugs around the house. That includes the Wi-Fi. I'm also grounded, and I'm looking forward to having my Samina bed, which is also grounded as of tomorrow night. So unplug the Wi-Fi or turn it off. Turn off your mobile phone. Don't charge it near the bed because it gives off EMFs. And there's a recent study that showed the brain while it's asleep with Wi-Fi on and Wi-Fi off. 
and the brain looks like it's awake even though you're asleep. You're not repairing properly. Anyway, another thing is, is you have electrical sockets behind your bed. I mean, let's, I want to test here. Who has plugs next to their bed? Yeah, like everyone, right? Who pulls their bed away from the, the wall? Yeah, okay. Here's a quick hack that costs nothing. 12 to 18 inches away from the wall and retest your sleep. You will see you have got wires running behind your bed in the wall that interferes with your sleep, in my opinion. And people will say, show us the studies, show us the studies. Test it. I don't care about studies in this case. I care what works. I look for patterns. So while I'm not a fan of fasting too much, I am a fan of intermittent fasting. And for guys, I consider that to be eating an eight-hour window for women in a 12-hour window-ish. Women seem to mess their hormones up quite a bit when they fast too much. Netflix is great, but the problem is Netflix is full of killing and violence and things that trigger our fight or flight that make us think that we're actually in that situation. So it says winding down, you're actually winding up. And if you look at your heart rate variability, if you track it, you will see how much it affects your heart. Have an hour to an hour and a half of winding down. Don't run around your day and then jump into bed and expect to sleep properly. You may not realize it, but actually in the financial world, and I've been reading a lot recently, and I've read a Tony Robbins book recently, actually, and he's talking about compound theory and how important it is in finances and how, as humans, we can't comprehend it. In fact, Einstein calls it, I think it's the eighth wonder of the world. We just can't get our heads around compound theory. Well, it's the same with our sleep. Just one night, or just two nights, or just three nights where you're sleeping 10% less than you should be. It's really, really important to get these things right. Open your window, even if you're in the city. I've tested this now, probably about 100 days. Having the window open, having fresh air in there, you don't wake with a headache, you don't feel wake feeling groggy. It's a quick hack that costs nothing. I want to do this again. So who opens the window at night here? Who's lying? <laughs> um, <laughs> Temperature control is also important. And I think the cooler the better, not too cold. For me, it's 20 degrees actually is the optimal. And I find I sleep better in hotels because of the temperature, but I have the window open, otherwise you dry out. Anyway, I'm gonna move on a bit quicker from here. Staying hydrated, we are electrical creatures and electrolytes help our system run as it should do, electrically speaking. And if you're dehydrated, you're pretty knackered pretty quickly. And in fact, 5% dehydration causes up to 30% decline in mental capacity or cognition. So here's the things you should do. And I'm going to be really quick with this one. Make sure you filter your water. Aquatura downstairs, they're my brand of choice. That's why they're here. I use it personally. Reverse osmosis. Remineralize it with a pinch of Celtic sea salt. Costs you nothing from anywhere, including Amazon. Link in my bio. <laughs> um, don't drink standard tap water and people say, yeah, there's no proof in that there's loads of studies now about how bad tap water is and how much crap there is in it, including hormones just don't and if anyone says, do you want the tap water or the bottle of water, and you go, oh, it's four pounds for a bottle of water, I'm not going to do it get the bottle of water, seriously and don't drink for 30 minutes before or 30 minutes after your meal because you're watering down your stomach juices, let's call them juices, and making it harder for your digestion to work, which means you don't get enough nutrients or as, much, as many nutrients from your food, which can hamper your whole system. Natural light. And I feel like a right hypocrite right now. <laughs> it's pretty bad. The reason we have this venue, actually, and the main reason for us moving venues from our 2019 event was because of the shocking light in the Olympia business place. And here, it's amazing. Light is far more important to all of us than most of us know. This is why blue blockers work. And we get kind of charged by the sun. And we really don't get enough of it, which is why I have a tan most of the year, because I follow the sun, because 
my body operates significantly better. That means removing junk light where possible. If you're in front of a laptop all day, like Ben said earlier on, use yellow lenses. If there's a, a room that seems quite blue or you start getting a headache, all you have to do is put your phone onto video like this and hold it up to the light and see if it flickers. I was in a health clinic the other day and I was like, definitely not feeling good in here. I feel like I'm getting a headache. I was like, I'm just going to test it. Flick, 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 flick. We don't see it consciously, but it affects us. And if you get headaches or migraines sometimes, and who suffers with headaches? Yeah, a good few of us. It's often lighting or dehydration. So make sure you get plenty of natural light. We didn't evolve wearing clothes top to toe in an office with blue lighting, not seeing the sun for eight months of the year and only getting two weeks of the year in the sun, which is when we burn because our skin just isn't ready for it. And then when we wear sunglasses, which stops our body from knowing actually how powerful the sun is and then get burnt to a crisp. That was me. Now, vitamin D is amazing for health, but supplementing should be to supplement, not to replace light. If you have a light deficiency, you have a light deficiency. You should be getting natural light. But if you can't for whatever reason, and you're not being lazy, vitamin D supplementation is great. Has everyone got a picture of this? So, as Darren was saying, grounding, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen my feet about a million times, and all of your feet about a million times, because <laughs> I do it everywhere I go. But the point is, is it's so powerful for health. It reduces inflammation. In fact, it's the most powerful one of all for anti-inflammatory. It's nature's antioxidant, and it's in abundance, and it's free, again, you don't need anything. So on studies before and after, in thermography scans, you can see the body cools down and isn't so inflamed. If you look at red blood cells under a microscope, before grounding, they're clumped together. And as soon as 40 minutes grounding, you can see that the red blood cells are equidistant again. So your blood is flowing better. And if your blood is flowing better and you've been hydrating properly with the right minerals, how much better are you going to feel? It's very simple. And again, it's compounding. Now, downstairs we have um, Bahi, I think it's pronounced, I always say B-A-H-E, trainers which are grounded. And they've been in touch with me for a year or so developing these trainers. So you can actually be grounded while wearing trainers with socks on. They work. I've tested them. I've got two pairs of them. Not wearing them today, which is a bit naughty, but these are my favorite for comfy. The point is, is you don't have to say, oh, I don't want to look like an idiot sitting in the garden with my shoes off. You can actually wear a decent pair of trainers and do it. There's also shoe straps at Functional Self, which wrap around your shoe like this, and so you can be grounded. Or you can just stand out in the garden for 10 minutes a day on your own with a cup of coffee, tell the family to respect that time when you need a break. Now, I did a cool consult, kind of consult call with someone a few months ago. And she's like, I just don't get the time. I've got three kids running around. I've got a husband that needs feeding, blah, 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 blah. It's like, if they don't understand that you need 10 minutes to yourself a day in the garden or something for yourself, like, you've got to change some stuff because this is like 10 minutes. That's all I'm saying. If your health is that important, what's going to happen if you're unhealthy? Breathing. Patrick McGowan, in my opinion, is the expert on this, by far, which is why he's here. It wasn't easy to get him here and all these guys, but they really are the best of the best. And I'm not an expert again, but one of the significant shifts for me was actually realizing that I was using my mouth to breathe. And now while I talk a lot, and you breathe through your mouth when you talk a lot, Focusing on breathing through the nose has a massive impact on health as well. It's very easy to do. So who's tried mouth taping? Impressive. Okay, cool. To start with, if you mouth tape at home in bed, 
you'll probably wake up and freak out at like three or four in the morning and rip it off thinking you can't breathe, which tells you that you need to do it and you need to proceed and persist for a few days. Because when you learn to breathe through your nose and says your mouth, you are basically oxygenating your body significantly better. You're not going to wake up with a dry mouth. And I won't go into the details of it, but it's all about nitric oxide production. It also helps form your face and jaw structure better. And Dr. Dom will talk about this, I'm sure, in his talk about uh, nose breathing. For instance, when we're born, babies breastfeed, they breathe through their nose. So learn to breathe through your nose, even when you're exercising. For instance, when I started, I was trampolining every day in my garden. And I was panting and breathing through my mouth afterwards. I was like, <gasps> like crazy. I was like, I'm so bad. After uh, mouth taping for about two or three weeks, I would then trampoline. And all of a sudden, I could mouth tape while trampolining. I was like, I've adapted so quickly. I can hold my breath twice as long. And my energy is better as a result. And I get less headaches. And breathing, it doesn't really get much more basic than that, let's be honest. On top of that is air quality. Now, at the AquaTrue booth, they've got the Air Doctor, which is the air purifier that I use. It has a HEPA filter. It has an ionizer. It's bloody brilliant. I've got one in my lounge, and I've got one in my bedroom. And that is to clear the crappy air from the city the best I can, because I have the window open. Exercise and movement. And as you can tell from my physique, I am one lazy bastard when it comes to this, and I have to force myself to do it. So what do I do? I make sure I trip over the things that I have to do. I have a rebounder next to my standing desk. Obviously, by presupposition, I have a standing desk, and I'm working standing most of the time. I have my task list every morning, which comes up on my phone, and I do stretches. I use a roller. And pre-having COVID, I was going to the gym and built up very, very quickly from, from being focused on it. After COVID, I kind of let it go a bit. And then the summit came on, and there's a lot of work. And there's my excuses for not going to the gym, which I'll get back to soon. I promise, Dom. <laughs> um, anyway, make it so that you trip over these things. If you've got a chin-up bar, stick it in the doorway to the kitchen so you have to do it every time you walk through. And set yourself a rule that you'll do three or five or whatever. And try to stand and say, sit. Blood flows better, the brain works better, digestion works better. So many things just by standing instead of sitting. In fact, if you see me around London or anywhere, like I don't sit down on the tube very often. I'm standing most of the time. And I only usually sit when I really have to think, because I, I don't know why. Anyway, the key thing is here is that we evolved using our bodies significantly more than our minds. But we did have a mind, which is why we evolved and have lovely technologies and all this stuff. But the point is now we're so wrapped up in our mind with all the things that we have to do every day, all the stresses, whether or not we've paid the phone bill, whether or not we've gone to the shops, if we've run out of raw dairy. But we should be using our bodies a lot more. It's flipped the wrong way around. So set yourself a routine, even if it's five minutes a day, even if it's just stretching, even if it's a little rebounder from Amazon, which you can get for 30 quid these days. Or there's um, um, power plate, which are really good, actually. I really like that. Rebounding is a, a really good one for me. I love it for lymphatic flow. It helps you with detoxification. And it's quite fun bouncing up and down in the lounge, although when the neighbors walk past, they think I'm a crazy motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> mm. the other thing is, is that our food is no longer really food. It's food. It's all processed. It's got chemicals in it. Even the vegetables really aren't vegetables anymore, because if you look at the nutrient profile in them and the minerals that are left in them and the various pesticides and all the crap, I mean, it's a minefield, man. You can't even buy a vegetable without worrying. <laughs> So imagine what it's like if you're buying pasta or pizza or all these things, the thousands of different things in our food. 
And as Jamie Oliver says, and this quote really did stay with me when I read this, and I've shared it probably five times on Instagram. Sorry if you keep on seeing my repeated posts, but it really resonated deeply. The food doesn't have ingredients, it is the ingredients. And if you look at our lunches here today, basic food, meat, fish, vegetables, maybe an oil with it. So yeah, get rid of the processed foods. If it's in a packet or tin, stick it in the bin. Eat the way your ancestors would. And again, Dom uh, is, I've got to point this out again. You can see how much I've learned from this dude over the last few years. Like, if you follow him, you'll see, like, ancestral breakfast, feeds the kids eggs, like, super clean, basic food. It's a massive one for me. And yet we don't realize that we get sucked into buying all these crappy products. Oh, just one thing, just one that, just one of those. Oh, just one bag of crisps. Compound theory. And if you track your food and look back, you go, holy shit. I can't believe how much stuff I brought this week. It's just not good. Yeah, so intermittent fasting we've already covered. Uh, for digestive issues, if you're having digestive issues, IBS or whatever, don't drink milk. Normal milk, raw milk is fine, in my opinion, especially A2 milk. Hillside Farm, thanks guys, they send me a box every week. Um, remove gluten, don't drink alcohol, remove lectins, oxalis, processed sugar, vegetables, sunflower oil, rapeseed oil, blah, 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 blah. Like, just no, just don't do it. And if you're moaning about your digestion and you're doing any of those things, stop moaning and either change something or don't, but stop moaning because you should be doing better. Big favorite for me is ox bile, because it supports your liver, but you do need to support the liver in other ways as well. And you can get Swedish bitters, which I carry around pretty much everywhere, and the one time I need them, I don't think they're in my bloody pocket, but the point is, is they support your liver, help you produce the right enzymes and digestive juices. I don't know why I always call it that. And I really like them, especially if you have loose stools and eat a lot of fatty foods, it supports, or if you're constipated, ox bile really helps get things moving fast. This is an important one. Because health starts in your mouth, hashtag. If your mouth is bad, and again, I've learned a lot of this from Dom and his book, it's all in your mouth taught me a lot of this and also from him personally, but if your mouth isn't good, the rest of you won't be. And if your teeth are falling apart all week and you needed to get fillings or you have root canals or all of these things, it's telling you that something is wrong in your body with your nutrients and minerals. And if you've got a dodgy gut and you're trying to fix candida or take probiotics or do this or do that, if you haven't optimized your mouth, you are wasting your time because anything in your mouth goes into your gut. So if you have an infection, a hidden infection under a root canal, for instance, you are constantly eating that stuff that comes out of it, which will affect your microbiome balance, which is why I talk about biological dentistry so much. It's been a big journey for me. I've had ceramic implants, I had multiple teeth pulled out. My teeth were in shit condition for many years until I met this dude, Dom, over here. NDU Clinic in London are exhibiting here today. And um, if you have anything going on with your mouth, I really recommend going and getting a consultation with those guys. They are awesome. So the quick things to do, if you haven't already taken a photo, and I'll be super quick on these, remove the metal from your mouth. If you have metal fillings, they are interfering with you. They are also, to quote Dom, an antenna for EMFs, and there are studies behind this now. Ceramic is far better. It looks more natural. It's not an interference in your body. Don't have titanium implants. Good God. I have seen a lot of the things behind the scenes of what those things do in your body. Um, oil pulling, ancient Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic principle, coconut oil, 10 minutes, swish it around in your mouth every morning. It's really great. Oral probiotics, and there's um, 
in vivo health that do those. Um, I won't bore you about the fluoride thing, tongue scraping, another Ayurvedic principle. Um, and read Dom's book. And actually, Dom's giving a talk, I think, tomorrow afternoon, and a book signing afterwards. Sounds like I love that dude, doesn't it? <laughs> I do. I do. He's awesome. So, another one is, imagine you lived with an evil bully to the extreme, and he was beating you up all day, every day. It would do your head in. That's to the extreme. Now, dial that down by 90%. It's still affecting you. You're still in fight or flight. You should, we have an abundance of incredible people in this world. I mean, many of them are in this building right now. All loving, caring, growth mindset people that want to help each other and all be healthy and happy. And the healthier you are, the happier you are. And the happier you are, the nicer you are. I was a dick when I was ill. I really was. Some people might say I still am. When I was learning psychology way back when, one thing I heard, and you probably all heard this quote because it's gone around on Instagram ever since, I think, is uh, you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Make those five people awesome. If you hang around with five sick people, you'll be sick. If you hang around with five millionaires, you'll be a millionaire. Like, it doesn't get easier as well, and it's free. I tag myself everywhere around the world with these awesome humans, and it's been a massive change for me. Instead of these people that you always have to, like, put effort into whether or not you're treading on eggshells or if you said something wrong or whatever, like, life gets so much easier when the people are awesome. This was a big turning point for me as well. If 80% of your issues come from 20% of the people in your life, you know what to do. I was working with an awesome dude. He was a mega brain. He was 100 times smarter than me, and I felt like a stupid little kid around him. And he was good for the business, but every day I was worried about upsetting him. I hated it. And I heard this quote by Tim Ferriss on his podcast. And the next day I went in and I said, I want to buy you out. Don't moan about it, change it. I sold that agency a few years later and it was the best thing I ever did. And even though I don't earn anywhere near what I used to in my agencies, I wouldn't change it for the world. I do this crazy risky business we call a conference that gets postponed multiple, multiple times with thousands of people and things that could go wrong. And even though the tickets are expensive, it's not a massive business. The agency was, but it's worth it. So when people say, I run three jobs, I can't afford to do this, that, or the other, change something. We only live once. I won't bang on about the others. But I can't stress enough how important this is for your health. And that's why the summit, to be honest, is such an awesome thing. Who's made friends here this weekend? And it's only one day so far. Awesome. Like, in between talks and in the between exhibitors, make friends. Like, don't sit playing on your phone being embarrassed, because everyone feels like that. And if everyone feels like that, you're sitting in the corner not getting to know awesome people. I know my best friends through going to conferences, like with Tony, for instance. Enjoy the people around you. Everyone's always worrying what everyone else thinks about themselves more than what they think of you. Trust me. So, as Dr. Ted Akikoso said at the 2019 summit, which I thought was awesome. <laughs> okay, I've updated it a little bit. I'm not going to lie. The prescription for optimal health is very simple. Sleep well, eat well, hydrate well, breathe well, move well, sun well, ground well, relate well, love well, very well, <laughs> and detox well. So, when you've got all these basics nailed, and they're all there, really, when you've got them nailed, all the fun stuff is here. Because in all of the fundamentals I've talked about, I didn't talk about tracking. Because you can get 80% of the way there by doing this stuff. 
but tracking it will help you get further, faster. Yeah, and there's peptides and bioregulators that Ben talked about. And yeah, I do all these crazy things. Stem cells, NAD, neurofeedback, C60, cryotherapy, grounding bed sheets. And grounding bed sheets are great, but if you're not getting shoes off and standing in the garden, like. So, what's coming next? Well, I did an interview this morning, and they said, Tim, where is the health space going in England? What do you think is going to happen next? I think in the next 10 years, health is going to be individualized and personalized. You will have a test and you will know which supplements you need to take. In fact, there's a company downstairs, Bionique, that I think is the, the beginning of the future in this, which is why they're here, by the way. You won't go to the doctors and say, I've got um, an infection, or I've got, I'm tired, or I can't sleep, and he says, here's a sleeping tablet, or here's an antibiotic. It's not going to be that at some point. And there's people like Dr. Rangan Chatterjee that is at the front, front of changing this, and Asim Mahotra as well. It's not just going to be a same pill for everyone. It's going to be individualized. People are realizing that they need to return to nature and ancestral living. You just have to follow the liver king to know this. <laughs> Who follows the liver king, by the way? <laughs> you got to follow this dude. <laughs> Oh, he walks around New York in underwear, basically, and pulling chains and things around and promoting the ancestral lifestyle while flying around in a private jet and may or maybe not doing steroids. But the, <laughs> the point is, is that he has millions of followers now in no time because people realizing that nature is important. And we know it for two weeks of the year when we go on holiday. Supplements for kids is coming. It's getting faster and faster. People are asking me about this every single day. And biohacking your pets, believe it or not, is coming. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but actually we've got Bella and Duke downstairs now. It's all about pet health. And I think this space is going to grow massively. So, cheeky plug. It's my conference. If you can't get on stage, make one. It's me. <laughs> um, I brought out the health optimization program during COVID while I was traveling because so many people were asking me questions every day, two or 300 questions a day, the same questions over and over, and I ended up just copying and pasting or retyping it, and it was becoming soul destroying, so I thought I'd record it, and I did. Here's the course. Do it, don't do it, I don't mind. It's a good resource. It's a whole community of people, Slack channel where you can keep up to date with everyone and me. 197 quid, bargain, if I do say so myself. If it wasn't mine, I'd buy it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Not really. And then this is the announcement for next year. 2023. The tickets aren't live until tomorrow. We've got some big plans. And if this year is anything to go by, and we're double the size that we were in 2019, so there's 2,100 people and 100 exhibitors, 2019 were 44 exhibitors and 1,164 people. So if you want to come next year, and it will never be cheaper than this, trust me. We, we <laughs> trust me. <laughs> anyway, and I think that is it.